kinds of fairy tales. Fairy tales I hated and fairy tales I hadn't heard yet. Because every fairy tale ends bad for the guy with a disability. I mean, Snow White, she trades in seven perfectly good little ones for one big one. The Ugly Duckling, now that had promise. It starts out really good because it's this huge duck that's big and steps on all the other ducks. I thought that was great, you know. But then you find out he's really a swan. It's like, no, no. I mean, what does that do for a kid with a disability? You know, hope a ship of aliens lands and goes, yeah, you're really one of us. Meanwhile, you're stuck living with ducks. But then my grandmother said, fairy tales were tales of their time. They just wrote them down as they are at that time, she said. But if they were allowed to adapt and to change over time, they'd be very different now. So she told me stories that were different that made me actually love fairy tales. But one of her stories was called The Pot. <laughs> Back in the day when pots and pans could talk, which indeed they still do, there lived a man that went to the river every day and filled two pots with water. Well, one day, one of the pots developed a small crack. And as time went on, that crack widened until by the time the man got home, all the water had leaked out of the pot. Finally, the pot turned to the man and said, please, every day, take me to the river, every day, the water leaks out, please replace me with another pot. And the man turned to the pot and said, look down the trail. And the pot looked down the trail. And on the side of the trail with the pot that didn't have a crack, it was craggy and rocky. But on the side of the path with the pot with the crack, wild flowers grew. The man said, every day you water those flowers. Every day you make my difficult journey beautiful. I think I'll keep you. The thing I love about the story of the pot is that it's the flaw that gives it its power. Um, when you look back at FDR, different people that were strengthened and empowered by their disability, I, I think that's what the pot is talking about. It's like Leonard Cohen says, the cracks let the light in, and that's the way it is. That's the way we learn. So when I work with kids, sometimes I'll say, uh, I want you to take the thing that makes you different. What makes you separate than the rest of the world? Now, what power does that give you? Um, because it does, that's where we get our power. I think I became a storyteller because of my left arm. People would refer to my arm as either withered or crippled or say, you poor thing, or what happened. But by the words they chose, I could tell whether they blamed me, my parents, God, or themselves for my condition. And with that information, I could get what I needed out of them. I mean, it's not on purpose, it's the way a kid works, you know? You're always looking for an angle. I was born with a condition called TARS. The A and the R is absent radius, so I don't have a bone in my arm that leads to the thumb. So I don't have a thumb either, and my arm is shorter, and I have four fingers. And I've always worn one of these braces my whole life. These things are actually great. Um, especially if you have a brother, they're really hard. Perry thrust. <laughs> So it really made me the person I am in many ways. When I was three years old, I went to Shriners Hospital for an operation. And I remember the thing that they told me was, we're gonna fix your arm. And I started crying because I didn't want them to fix my arm. It's what made me special. And I was worried that I was gonna be like everybody else because it was made clear through my grandmother, through my mom, that there was something to be cherished and honored about having something different. And it's true, you see the world through a spectrum. The world suddenly isn't made for you. And you get to a whole nother view of the world. And I always considered that a gift. I still do. I would really much rather have this arm than not have it the way it is. I was raised just to do everything I had to do, be very self-sufficient. But at the same time, I knew that something separated me from the rest of the world. And I really liked that.